here. If anything, thank your feet for sitting down, right? Because yeah. I've been at my booth already on Amazon shopping for new shoes. I'm seeing these more dressy shoes with the, uh, the soles that are like tennis shoes. And it's like, you know what? That might be the, the thing for me. But guys, welcome. Thank you for being here. Welcome to Services 2020. I'm Brett Monty. I'm with Mercrete Systems. Um, just a little background on myself. I've been in this industry for 32 years. My father was a retired tile contractor um, for, gosh, he started in the early 60s. Um, it's a family business for us. Um, I've worked on both sides of the industry, whether it be on the setting material side, um, which I am now, or on the tile manufacturing side. So I've kind of covered gamuts of uh, both of us. So hopefully I can speak the language that, uh, whether it be a contractor related or distributor related or manufacturer related. So contractors, contractor, distributor, any installer, well, contractor, installer. Um, in my neck of the world, we call them contractors. Um, so contractors, uh, so what we're gonna talk about today is surface prep. Um, surface prep is a very vital part of our business, especially when it comes to ceramic tile and a lot of other floorings, but we're gonna talk more about the ceramic tile side of things. Um, my father had always taught me, and it's always been a, an adage that we've used over the years is, your installation's only as good as the substrate that it sits upon, right? And installing tile, I don't wanna take anything from an installer, but installing the tile part of things is not necessarily always the most difficult part. It's the surface prep. It's the prep prior to the installation. And not only that, it's the layout. Is layout's very important. So we're gonna talk about surface prep in, in the sense of what's looked at by the industry standards, what's required by industry standards, but we're also gonna kinda of look at a product here that we've got um, that is a pretty unique product. I've got Sergio here in a few minutes. He'll mix up some product and we'll kind of show you this and give you an idea of what this product can do. But when it comes to surface prep, um, I know if you're in Utah, correct? So most everything you're doing is over on grade slab. You got some upstairs or do you have basements? I know where we're from, everything's above grade. Um, so everything's over wood. And I tell you, I moved to the Midwest to Chicago seven years ago from California. From, I went from a slab market, the only time it was anything wood was gonna be second story bathrooms, master baths and things of that effect, to the Midwest where everything's on grade or above grade. So with that being said, things are looked at differently. Um, if you've got installers, installer yourself, when you walk into a home, and we'll talk about wood substrates first, just like what we're standing on here, what does a contractor do when he walks into a house? First thing he does. What's this? He's, he's checking for deflection. And deflection over a wood substrate is probably one of our biggest enemies. Um, I go on a lot of job calls and claims where somebody's saying, hey, your grout failed. It's cracking. Well, why is my grout cracking? There's a reason why it would be cracking. Or the tile's cracking, or the tile's popping up. And typically, it's because of deflection. Um, is anybody familiar with uh, TCNA handbook? The blue book, blue TCNA handbook. My own people are, they better be. Um, TCNA handbook, and you can get one right over in here, that's on the other side of the booth. Basically, the TCNA handbook is the guide for our industry for ceramic tile. Inside that handbook is what architects use for specifications. It doesn't tell you how to do an installation, but it tells, tells you what's required of that installation. For example, this subfloor that I'm standing on, I'm gonna assume it's 16 on center. Up in our neck of the woods, it's 16 on center. Where you're at, it might be 19 too, if it's second story, 16 center? Okay, great. Some home builders down in the south, I know in Texas, I was there a few weeks ago, they've moved out to 19 twos with trusses. The further you move that joy spacing, the more deflection you're gonna get, okay? We can't put tile on a floor that does that, can we? No. So what is a solution to that? How do you fix, if, if you walk as an installer or if you're selling a job or your sales team selling a job, you walk into a floor and it's got some bounce to it. It's got some deflection. How do you fix that? There's ways to fix that. Fix that. One way is you can add another layer of plywood, which is recommended by TCNA. Difficult in that is, a lot of times you're adding another half inch layer of plywood on top of that, and if it's in a kitchen area, is now you've got appliances. Once you put tile on top of it, you could be creating up to three quarters of an inch height difference with appliances. That could be a problem. 
Another way to do it, if it's available, I know in our area, if it's single story with a basement, you can go underneath and they block between the joists. They run blocks. That's a really good way to do it because you're not raising the height of the floor, you're not adding extra layers of plywood, but you're taking away that deflection. Another way of doing that is a self-leveler, but it has to be a wire-reinforced self-leveler, meaning that you have to put down, a, we refer to it as metal lath, some people call it chicken wire or diamond wire, but you're putting down a metal lath and then you're pouring your self-leveler over the top of that, and that's a monolithic wire-reinforced concrete bed, but that will only help a little bit, okay? What we're referring to in this deflection is L over 360. Anybody ever heard that terminology, L over 360? Okay, do we know what it is for natural stone? 720, so let's double that. Just to give you an idea, there's a math equation that goes with that, I won't go through it, but if you're 16 on center, the amount of deflection allowed for L over 360 is less than a 30 seconds of an inch deflection. Okay, it means it's gotta be a solid floor. So we need to create a solid floor. So when it's wood, what we wanna do is we either wanna block underneath it, we wanna put another layer of plywood on top of it, or we can use some type of mud bed self-leveler that's wire reinforced, and that will help build the floor. Again, it goes back to heights. It goes back to um, being able to put appliances back in. But I do have a question for you guys. And who here thinks that putting a cement board, I've got Hardy down here. Um, there's all kinds of cement boards, USG, Duroc, Wonderboard, Triton, all of them are out there. Who believes that putting a cement board down on a floor will actually strengthly, will, will add strength to that floor? Anybody live by that? Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. If I take a quarter inch hardy backer, we're all familiar with hardy backer. I'm, I'm, I love the product, I'm not picking on it. But if I take half inch hardy backer or, or quarter inch hardy backer or quarter inch wonder board or Duroc and I hand them to my 84 year old mother and she can bend it and break it over her knee, is there a structural integrity in that product? No, there's not. So what that boils down to is when you're putting a cement board down, all you're doing is creating a bondable surface. You're giving your product, your tile, your mortar, something to bond to. But those cement boards, not one of those manufacturers that I named, will warranty for deflection. They're going to tell you that floor has to meet the L over 360 or L over 720 equation, depending on what you're doing, before you apply that cement board, that wonder board, or any of those products. So again, they're great products, but they're used for one thing and one thing only. They're used to bond something to a wood surface. Okay. We have a liquid membrane that works just for that. You're not raising the height, but it still requires the same thing. That floor has, to, the deflection has to be fixed prior to the installation of that. So, with that said, up here, what we're getting ready to do, Sergio's gonna go ahead and mix up something here. This is called ProPatch Plus. This is a patching compound that, or a leveling agent, whatever terminology you wanna use. This particular product was made for concrete markets, for slab markets. It, don't get me wrong, it can be used over a wood substrate. We've got guys doing it all the time. But one of the things when I was down in Texas many years ago, um, working with some installers, they were taking some of these products and they were mixing them up very fluid, very wet, or what I refer to as loose. They were taking those, pouring them out on the floor, and they were taking a screed. Are you guys all familiar with what a screed is? I know the contractor guys do. Basically a long straight edge. And they were taking that and dragging it across that concrete slab to fill in the low spots to create a flat floor. Now, when you're installing tile, my installers, who likes flat floors? Yeah, the bigger the tile, the flatter that floor needs to be, right? Do we use thin sets or mortars to level floors out? No, we're not supposed to do that. They will shrink. These other products are made not to shrink. So we want to use a product that is made to do that. So when this product's mixed up, you'll see it here, it's mixed up almost like a self-leveler. It's very fluid, but it's a patching compound or a leveling agent. So what we'll do with this product, you can mix it up, the contractor can take it, pour it out in the corner, take a screed, drag it across that floor, all the high spots filling in the low spots. What's unique about this is in 45 minutes, you're walking on top of it. It has self-healing technology. As long as it's still in a fluid state, that means if I touch it with a trowel, if I hit it with a screed, and you pick up, if you're familiar with screeds, you pick up that screed, you get the drips off of it, or you get what's called screed marks. You gotta let it set up a little while, you gotta come back and smooth it. With this product, you don't need to do that. You screed it, pick up your, your 
straight edge or you pick up your trowel, you all right there? Oh, great. All right, I'll keep talking. Um, Got a battery exchange. So, in turn, when you scree this out and you pick it up and you've got those bumps or those bubbles that pop back up, they'll flow right back into it. So it's self-healing. I can run a trowel, it's like parting the Red Sea, it'll fill right back in on itself. So it's a very unique product. So we talked about wood. Is there any questions on the wood part of it? And everything that I'm giving you on the wood is in T or TCNA standards. They're requirements by industry standards. So when they say that a floor 16 on center requires a one and an eighth inch thick plywood, we're talking plywood, not OSB, okay? Most home builders are using OSB nowadays, right? So OSB, if we need to put another layer, we're putting another layer of plywood, tongue and groove plywood over the top of it to make it an inch and an eighth, unless we're going underneath and blocking. The main thing is there is that we're meeting that L over 360 direct deflection rating. We want to take that bend out of the floor. So we talk about concrete. Two types of concrete, what are they? And this is kind of a joke, so. Cracked and gonna crack, right? So um, when you move down south, or if you go down south, and I can pick on Texas because I'm from Texas originally. Have you ever seen a slab poured in Texas? It looks like the Gulf of Mexico. It looks like this. It's pretty bad. Um, that's why these guys were down there taking these products, mixing them up very fluid, and, and screeding them across the floor to fill in those low spots. Well, the bigger the tiles are, the flatter the floor that we want, right? Nowadays, who sets 12 by 12 floor tiles anymore? Anybody or sells 12 by 12 floor tiles? Most of the time they're gonna be 12 by 24 or the planks six by whatever length long. Um, those are all considered large and heavy tiles, LHT or large format tiles. So in our industry, anything with one edge greater than 15 inches is considered a large format tile or, or large and heavy tile. So we need to take into consideration the surface prep that goes along with that. Is when I had a smaller tile, if that floor had a little undulation to it or a little you know, area, I call them bird bass to it, a 12 by 12 would flow with a little bit more. Some guys would use thin set underneath it to kind of get it back up so that way they're not doing it. We're not supposed to use thin set. But now the tiles have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. If you try to put a large, even 12 by 24 tile on a floor that's got a lot of undulation to it, you're gonna end up with seesaw. You'll push one side down, the other side pops up. How many times have we done that? You know, then you put more mortar underneath it. Okay, then you try to level it out and get it there. So you're using a level, a, a mortar to level that out. That's not the way to do it. You want to minimize how thick these mortars go underneath it. Because a thin set mortar is made to go 3 16ths inch or thinner after beat in. A large and heavy tile mortar can go up to, like for example, ours can go up to 3 quarters of an inch thick underneath it without shrinkage. But why would we want to use that much mortar at a cost of what mortars are to level out a floor when I can buy a product similar to this for a lot less money than a bag of mortar that'll cover a lot more square footage to level that floor out or, or flatten that floor out. Level might not be the term we want to use, but flatten it out. So now that we got a battery, he's mixing this up. If you mixed up some of my competitor products this loose or with this much water, they'd probably fail because when you add too much water to some of these cement products, what's gonna happen if they're not made to be that loose, you're separating all the molecules, you're pulling the cement out, you're overwatering it, they're gonna be thin, they're not gonna be as strong as they're supposed to be, they won't have the PSI or shear strength. This particular product at this mixture is a little over 3,000 PSI, which passes ANSI standards once it's dried, once it's cured out, okay? So it's a very strong polymer modified product. You can use it over wood. So wood we were talking earlier, if you, you, if you met your deflection values on your wood, but you had a little low spot, you could take this product and use that to flatten that floor out. Over concrete, we're gonna mix it up. That's good. Um, he's gonna mix it up, he's gonna pour it out. What we've got here, whoop, this little square area, we're gonna pour some in just to contain it so that way it doesn't flow out. But it's gonna look and, and act kinda like a self-leveler, okay? First thing Sergio's doing is actually taking a sponge and he's wiping off that surface, that substrate. Whether it be a wall or a floor, why do we want to wipe it off? What's our biggest contaminant? Dust. Okay, thanks, Ann. She doesn't even wait for anybody. She's so excited. Um, dust is our biggest contaminant. My father always used to say, if I didn't take a sponge, or if my guys didn't take a sponge and wipe that surface off, I might as well take a piece of tile, spread some thin set on the back, and set it in the garden. 
because all it's going to do is stick to the dust. You're not getting that maximum bond that you're looking for. So, my mix didn't work, your mix didn't work out all that great, huh? Just push it off to the side. Okay, so he mixed it, but we're doing this on a time crunch. Um, so as you can see this, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. It's a very fluid product, but if you can see where he's running his trowel through it, it's self-healing on itself, minus the little clumps that he put in there. But it's self-healing on itself. So this is a product, again, you pour it out on the floor, take your screed, or even take your flat trowel, and we'll put some off to the edge here in just a moment. You can pour more in there, Serge. Yeah, I see more clumps. Man, you're fired. So, no, Sergio, poor guy, has been helping me out for the last two days constantly. He's my man. And I'm getting his name right this time because earlier I was calling his brother. His brother's Hector and works for us. Um, so, you can see, he's putting this in there. It's kind of not like a self-leveler seeking it. We're not priming the floor. We're, you're going to end up pushing it around wherever you need to, but that self-healing technology minus is having to have to touch it. How many of you guys have used some of these other patches that are out there? I'm not going to mention names, but there's many of them out there where they mix it up and you have to take it and you're flat troweling it where you want it. You're smoothing it out. You may let it set up a little while. Sometimes even guys will come back with sandpaper and sand off the top of it where they had ridges just to get it flat for the vinyl guys. Okay, Tile's not so important. Vinyl guys, they need it super flat because they don't want it telegraphing through. Okay, This product, when it's dry, you can see where he's kind of flat troweling it right here. And I don't know if anybody wants to come up or even afterward you guys can. Um, to take a look at it and look how smooth this is. The sand or the aggregate that's in it will settle down to the bottom of it, so it's not going to be that rough. But what I'm going to let you guys look at, this is the product right here. You can pass that around. Um, that's the product right here that he's putting down. That's dried and cured over wood. So smooth as a baby's you know what. So it's a unique product. It's, it's like I said, it's got an aggregate in it, but when it dries out with minimal touching, He's having to touch it more right now because he's got some clumps in it. But with minimal touching, there's no touching it. If you're doing anything, let's say you do fill a bird bath area, is around the edges after it starts to set up a little bit, you may take your flat trowel and just feather it off to nothing. So that way you have a transition right there. But it's a really unique product. But again, over concrete, the main thing that we're looking at with these products is a flat floor. It goes back to large format tiles need a flat floor. Okay, dowel tile, I don't know if anybody's seen it over there, they're launching a click tile. Has anybody walked by that? Great product, but what's that gonna require? A very flat floor, because there's nothing bonding it to the floor. So it's gonna need a flat floor. Hence, that's where products like this are used. They're used in that. Unfortunately, we're not seeing as many tile setters as we wanna see out there prepping their floor prior to installation with this. Self-levelers are used the same, but self-levelers are pretty darn expensive. Typically, this bag is roughly $14 to $15 for a 25-pound bag. It's a lot less expensive than a self-leveler. You don't need the primer with it because it's we're not using it as a full raising the floor. If you wanted to raise a floor a quarter inch, then we're going to end up using a self-leveler for that. But for this, is, let's call it spot patching or spot leveling in those floors is it's a very unique product. We're the only manufacturer that I know of that has a fluid patching component like this at that price point. So, that you can see it starting to leak, sprung a leak on the side. Um, that's my tape job, I blame myself. So, with that being said, over concrete and over wood, how important surface prep? Is that something that we really need to spend a lot of time on? Again, not taking the insult away of putting a flooring or whether it be tile, or another type of flooring down, that sometimes is the easiest part. It's everything prior to that. How much time do we got left? Oh, we're right on time, five minutes late. So we're gonna be hanging out for a few minutes. If you guys got any questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, you guys are more than welcome. Stop by the Mercury booth. We got little Merc hats. Um, these are collectors. Every year we change his outfit. Last year he had a hard hat. The year before he had a hoodie. Um, he was kind of gangster looking. Um, then I think the year before that, the first year, he was just naked. So this year he's got his uh, OSHA jacket or his high, high vis jacket. So who knows what he'll have next year. But uh, our booth is about a half mile down that way. Um, look for the big Mercury logo. Um, also tonight, guys, just so you know, from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock um, at our booth, happy hour. 
It's all beer, nothing but beer. We're good old boys. No wine, no mixed drinks. But if you want a beer, stop on by. We also have coffee, too. So, um, again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask us. I'm here. we got Ann and Jay here from our uh, northeast. Put them on the spot. They're our new guys. Thank you very much.